All right. Welcome back to Dive Vibe. Today we are going to be trying something a little bit different. We're gonna be doing a bit of an interview. I'm gonna interview my buddy Peter here, Peter Miller. Uh, we're gonna be doing kind of a dive story type of thing. So he's gonna tell us a story. Uh, Peter actually used to work at the NASA Neutral Buoyancy Lab at Space Center Houston. I had the privilege of touring the laboratory uh, with Peter as my guide and it was absolutely amazing. I'll put some pictures up. I got a really awesome tour that most people don't get to do. Got right up there, got to hang out with an astronaut for a second. Not really, kind of, kind of <laughs> took you a had, picture with him. You get to see where we fill tanks, which exactly. is- Oh, that was cool. That yeah, was a really, yeah, yeah, yeah. really high no tech No one gets to see station. that, yeah. Um, so uh, Peter uh, preceded my working at Jack's Diving Locker, worked there for a long time. How many years did you work at Jack's? Previously. Prior to Houston? Yeah. Um, a little over five and a half. Well, five and a half years, mm -hmm. and then you came back, and now you've been, worked all here for like six months-ish, and then, what? and now you're back now, and you've been back for a month or so. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, we actually kind of traded spots, because I moved from Houston to Kona right around the same time that Peter moved from Kona to Houston, and I think we both agree that I made the better move at that point. And now he's made a great move back, which is great. We get to have Peter back. It's excellent. And Peter has a story for us today. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit more? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right uh, hi, everyone. Uh, once again, like Zach said, my name is Peter Miller. Uh, yes, I was a former astronaut trainer at NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. Um, I mean, I say astronaut trainer. Really, my job was dive operations specialist. I'm one of the divers in the water, in the tank with the astronauts, which is very cool. Um, but they come there to train, so hence Absolutely. astronaut trainer. In any case, right now, I'm a PADI IDC staff instructor, and I currently work for Jack's Diving Locker. And, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm home. I don't want to <laughs> go anywhere else. You know, I realized that uh, after the time away, uh, there's nothing the mainland has to offer me that uh, I want more than what this island has to offer. So that was an yeah. easy choice. And uh, I have a story to tell. Excellent. Let's hear it. Okay. So I'll just preface this by saying, you know, we know as dive instructors, one of the um, things that the students learn is don't take medication in order to go diving, just to be able to dive, right? Like Sudafed. Like Sudafed, that sort of thing, right? However, you know, on the medical form when you're a student, it asks, are you taking prescription medication? Because I feel like that not only just doesn't apply to things like decongestants, but that also applies to other types of medication that may have adverse effects under pressure and who knows how they're gonna react and yada yada. So I'll just preface it by sort of saying that first, yeah. right? So uh, this story uh, takes place a few years ago before I moved to Houston. I can't remember exactly when, but um, that day I was assigned to be a dive guide on the boat, which is uh, no students guiding certified divers uh, on the boat. And I had a group of uh, three. Uh, actually, they were family members. They were here in Hawaii on a family reunion type of trip. So it was a father and daughter and then a sort of more distant relation of theirs, right? And we'll call her Shirley, let's say. <laughs> yeah, we'll call her Shirley. Um, and uh, so I had the three of them. And, you know, they get on the boat, I meet them, and we're do I'm doing our normal sort of meet and greet, right? And, uh, you know, I suppose there, I should have realized there were like a series of red flags, right? But uh, we'll just start with the first one. So I'm talking with Shirley, asking her about her dive experience, if she has any equipment that's hers, yada yada. She pulls out a regular bag, she opens it up. There's no regulator inside, but instead is an Oceanic Pro Plus computer, which I like, you know, one of those air integrated console style. Yeah. Computers. Um, but there's no host to go with it. So like she has the quick disconnect, but nothing to connect it to. That dog right? won't hunt. No, no, it won't. <laughs> it will not, no. So, and of course, you know, that's, we don't, we don't just have Pro Plus quick yeah. disconnects like lying around, if right? If they took it underwater, it would just flood. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I believe. It wouldn't yeah. work very well. Well, I mean, the water hit. would go into where the hose would normally yeah. go, right? Yeah, I don't so, think it's yeah. gonna work. <laughs> yeah, and um, the other thing is, uh, so we, so problem one. Problem two, we go to turn it on and immediately it gives a low battery warning. Oh, so yeah. who knows how low that battery was. It could have died in the next 30 seconds. Yeah, you can't know, die. Right? You so can't we, allow someone to die with no, that No, of course not. Of course not, right? So the first thing I do is like, well, I'm, certainly, I'm sorry, but I don't think we're going to be able to use this computer on the dive, right? And so she takes it in stride, um, but there we go. Um, so then we talk about how much weight she's going to need. 
and um, she gives me some obscenely high number. You know, like people, they'll think, oh, they're like 500, they're like 105 pounds, and like, oh, I need 38 pounds of weight. And like, <laughs> she fell into that category. She was this tiny, you know, woman, and she did not need the amount of weight. But, you know, I think to myself, okay, sometimes I battle it out with them and try to, you know, convince them that they don't need that much. And sometimes I just give them what they want and just use it as a teaching tool. Yeah. So like they'll see how it went on this dive and then we'll use that as a sort of a stepping stone for like, okay, now this is what it's gonna be like if you don't have this much weight and you use less. We tread it your way, let's try well, it. Yeah, way. exactly, exactly. So just cause you know, I thought it would just be make things easier. Um, and of course I wasn't gonna let her do anything dangerous, like not be able to get off the bottom or anything. Like yeah. So I give her what she wants. Um, and, uh, you know, when it's time to get in the water, we get in the water and we do, a, I walk her through a weight check and of course drops like an anchor. <laughs> now, not all the way down to the bottom. I catch, I, I grab her. I made sure yeah. she doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, but as expected, right? You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, well, see how heavy you are. This is like, see how heavy you are. Mm -hmm. So maybe on the next dive, let's try anyway. So we go, I have, you know, other people in my group, right? So, all right, let's go ahead and start our dive. Right? So. Um, we all descend and you know, I'm looking at everyone, I'm looking at the other two, and before I know it, I go back to turn to her and she is tanked down on the bottom, arms and legs like up, like like a cockroach, right? Like a cockroach, <laughs> like on, the, cockroach. Like a cockroach on the kitchen floor. Yeah, exactly. So um, I was like, okay. So I go down, I get her up off the bottom so she's not like damaging the environment and put some air in her BCD. Uh, let her go to see oh, how you know to see how uh that works buoyancy wise and she just kind of isn't moving you know i mean she's <laughs> conscious and everything but she's just kind of like a you know like a little like a sea cucumber like floating in the, like a i don't know like yeah. a jellyfish just something that floats anyway so i'm like okay all right i see what i'm gonna have to do here and what i end up doing is you know hand on the tank and I just end up steering her around the dive site. As one like does. The, as one does, right? I'm sure you've done it. I'm sure you've done the dual hander too. Oh, yes, Tough I have. Yeah. This uh -huh. happens yeah. all the time when you're a dive guy. Sometimes I've done like, I hold a hand and then another person holds the hand of that person. Yeah. You know, we do what we got to do. I call it, uh, you know, like the Macy's uh, Thanksgiving parade. It's like you're a, like a blimp tender. Like uh -huh. you're holding onto their gauge while they're floating. Yeah, up. exactly. So <laughs> in this case, I'm sort of just steering her around, right? Yeah. Checking in with my other divers. Are you okay? Are you you okay? All right, we're all okay. No, Got it. Good. All right, okay, keep going. <laughs> so, you know, Tom comes time to the end of the dive and uh, it's time to do our safety stop, right? So we get up and uh, we're on diver two. Love that boat, right? You know how there's that line Best with boat. the big like lead weight at the bottom of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so I put her hand on the line. It's 15 feet down, put her hand on the line, hold on to it. And, you know, next red flag, other than the having to steer her around thing, so the weight, right, it's, I don't know, 20 pounds of, you know, 20 pound block of lead. Big old piece of lead. She's just letting it hit her in the head, right? What? Like, it's not a super rough day, but you know, it's a little bit of a surface what? chop, right? And every time the boat, you know, goes up and down, the, the weight moves and she's just letting it happen, right? Not, most people would just be like, ow, and then back away from it, right? She like it? I don't know, I don't know. We didn't get into that, but maybe. But anyway, she's not moving away from it, so. We get back, to, we get up, the safety stop is over, we get out, take our fins off, get her back on the boat and everything. And I'm just like, all right, after the gear's off and everything like that, and I was like, hey, uh, Shirley, um, let's go up to the front of the boat because I would love to talk about this dive, right? <laughs> um, if you asked me to come up to the bow of the boat to talk about this dive, I'm in trouble. I'm, I'm yeah. messed up. Um, but in any case, before I get up there though, her uh, relatives um, pull me aside and they tell me, it's like, hey, just so you know, she um, she takes uh, bipolar medication, right? So I'm sure they noticed things not going great on that dive because how could they not, right? So they pull me aside and she's taking the heck medication for bipolar. So I kind of have an idea of maybe what's going on going into this, right? So in any case, I go up, we talk about the dive. I say, okay, here's what I saw, right? <laughs> Because you always start it with, here's what I saw, because that's empirical evidence, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, we talk about the weighting thing. We talk about the not really being responsive underwater thing, letting the weight hit her in the head thing. Um, you know, all of that stuff, how it just seemed like she wasn't able to take care of herself. Go on for five to ten, five to ten minutes of this, right? After all of that, all of that, Zach, she looks me dead in the face and she says, but what happened? 
I was just like, oh my God, I just spent five to 10 minutes telling you what happened, right? <laughs> and at this point, after hearing the information about her medication situation, and um, after having this conversation with her and then having her get that sort of reaction, I've been trying to be diplomatic and just trying to let her dive the second time, but just trying to make it as you know, foolproof as possible for the next time. After that, I put all the pieces together and I was like, you know what, I'm sorry, Shirley. Uh, I'm not gonna let you dive this next dive. Right, I'm just, I'm putting my foot down. I'm sorry, we'll take you back to the dock. We'll refund your money because this is my call. I was like, but I, in good conscience, cannot let you dive, right? Something is going on. It's an incredibly hard decision to make <clears throat> as a dive master, dive instructor, because you're literally like saying, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna refund this person. And you're making that choice. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily management. It's, it's a hard it's a hard decision to make, but a necessary. Yeah, and I was fully prepared to, you know, back back myself up on, on this. But yeah. in any case, <clears throat> she said she wants to stay on the boat. Right, she said she wants to stay on the boat. <clears throat> I was like, all right, but you're, you know you're not diving, right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. She's like, I love being on boats. And I was like, okay, great. I go up to the captain. Uh, tell him what's going on, right? Um, so he's fully aware of the situation and everything like that. And I was like, okay, I'll leave it up to you, right? If you, you know, want to get her in the water, but she's not diving. She's like, okay. So <clears throat> I go on the dive with the rest of my group for the next dive. Dive is almost over, right? I um, back onto the boat, about to start our safety stop, go up, right? Yeah. I look up, or actually one of my divers points up, right? I look up and I see the captain towing Shirley's unconscious body back to the boat. So the boat. captain's jumped in at this point. The captain has Supposedly gone in and person. full rescue, full rescue oh mode, right? And I look up and I'm like, yep, that's a rescue. So diver recall, um, everyone up, right? I get up to the surface, communicate with the captain, see what's going on swim over to the boat and she's sack of potatoes at this point, oh, right? Jesus. So totally unresponsive, unconscious. Um, we get her back on the boat. He had found out later, he had already done a couple of rescue breaths in the water with her. She threw up in his mouth a little bit, as they do, you right? Hate to, you hate to see it. Anyway. Right, exactly. Um, we get her back on the boat. She, we check for breathing, check for pulse. Um, she has both, right? So we don't need to start CPR, we don't need to do more rescue best other than what's going on because she is breathing, she does have a pulse. Um, we, get on the, we get on the radio, get on the phone, call 911, call, um, you know, Coast Guard, they're gonna, not Coast Guard, the Baywatch, they're gonna meet us over at the pier. Um, and, um, and they do, right? So by the time, and by the time we get to the pier, she is conscious, she is responsive as well, she's communicating. Wow. So all good things, you know, she, she lived to, to hopefully not dive another day. Um, and, um, but you know, the thing was at the end of this sort of, you know, odyssey, right before she goes into the ambulance, you know, she looks at me and she says, what happened again? Oh right. God. And I was like, you know what? I was like, that's what these people are going to find out. They're going to, they're going to find out. Right. And she's like, and she, and she tells me, she's like, well, I didn't freak out. And I was like, you sure did. No, no, you didn't. I was like, you kind of went too far the other way. Yeah. Uh, in any case, so what happened during the surface interval was that uh, she went snorkeling and uh, she went unconscious while she was snorkeling, right? Jesus. And snorkel in the mouth, tip of the snorkel goes below the surface, she's still breathing. What happens? She breathes in a few lungfuls of water, right? Uh, which is, you know, what she threw up after when the captain gave her the first couple of rescue breaths, right? Um, now. We never want to see this happen, but imagine if she had been, if I had let her dive, right? It would have been and she had gone unconscious on scuba 20 feet down, 30 feet down, 40 feet down, you know, who knows, right? Um, so, definitely the right call not to let her dive. I think that's um, the takeaway for any new dive masters or instructors mm -hmm. out there. Don't be afraid to not let someone dive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you think something's hinky, it probably is. Yeah. Right? Um, anyway, so at the very end of all of that, her relatives told me that she had taken anti-anxiety medicine on top of her normal bipolar um, medication wow. um, so that she could dive without panicking, right? So, you know, I prefaced the, the story at the beginning, you know, it, it says in the student's training, open water training, right from the beginning, don't take medication so you can dive. And typically that's meant for decongestants and things like that. But 
I feel like absolutely that that should apply to don't take any medication so you can just so you can dive, including medication to calm yourself down, yeah. just so you can dive without panicking, right? Yeah. Um, in any case, after the end of that, I get me and the captain and the other crew member. We all get very nice notes from the relatives, Shirley's relatives. Nice thanking us, I think there were also gift certificates in there for like restaurants, you Very know, nice. thanking us for helping her and doing our jobs and, you know, saving her life basically, yeah. right? <clears throat> and Zach, the kicker, the absolute kicker is like a day or two <laughs> later, I get called into our boss's office oh my God. because she got an irate phone call from Shirley who was mad at me for, get this, not letting her dive with her computer. That was her takeaway? That was her takeaway. Her takeaway from the whole situation was, how dare I not let her die with a computer that has no hose to it, that it, it to attach it to, and also a battery that may or may not be dying in the next like couple of minutes. You're welcome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, yeah, but you're you're welcome for everything else, Shirley. So anyway, yeah, that's and that 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 was that. That's how that what went. A, what a story. Mm -hmm. So the next time you're thinking about becoming a dive master or an instructor, just be aware that something like that's probably going to happen to you. Uh, Hopefully not. Something but... uh, softer versions of that will happen to you with some frequency. <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, when I when I do videos, my reaction videos and stuff like that, we normally talk about what went well and what didn't go so well. So let's do that. So what didn't go so well? Taking the medication to try and be calm enough to go diving. That's just it, it's not it's not a good way to go about it. You need to get comfortable in the water first. Maybe take some swimming lessons, start it slow with baby steps. Uh, and then go, going back in the water, knowing that you've been that medicated, although at, at that point, probably not that conscious of how medicated they were. Um, what went what went good though? Because a lot of stuff went good. So didn't go on the second dive. We've already established that that was a great call because very likely, the same thing would have happened except 40 to 60 feet underwater. Yeah, exactly. Which would be horrible. Mm -hmm. um, the captain who said they would watch the diver, or the, sorry, snorkeler at this point, the captain who said they'd watch the snorkeler was actually watching the snorkeler. And that's important because sometimes, you know, a lot of times when, you're, when you've got a, a, a snorkeler that's coming along the boat, they're not necessarily with a guide and they're just out there uh, swimming around and the captain is the only one keeping an eye on him, which is typically fine. Nothing typically happens. But in this case, it was very good that the captain was watching because if he hadn't been, he or she, whoever it was, hadn't been, they, the, this diver might not have made it back. And this would have been a story that we wouldn't tell on here because it's just too sad. Too sad, yeah. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, I, think, I, think that's, I think that about covers it. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Peter, for coming on the show. It's been my it pleasure. Absolutely great. Hopefully, we'll have Peter back on again to talk about some astronaut stuff. That'd yeah, be astronaut stuff. Astronaut yeah. stuff. Yeah. And make a happy video. If you enjoyed this video, uh, hit the like button because that really helps me out. Or maybe if you learned something, whatever, just hit the like button. It's great. It doesn't cost you anything. Just hit it. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I'm going to do more interviews uh, with all my dive master instructor friends anybody cool that i meet along the way we'll see we'll see what we can get going um, and make sure you hit the bell notification icon so you get notified when my videos come out and if you'd like to support the channel there's two ways you can do that you can go to patreon and support my channel for five bucks a month or you could uh, hit up bonfire and get one of my t-shirts which would be excellent this t-shirt right here actually is available uh, thanks so much for diving with me today and i'll see you in the water